In the vast world of web development, React has become a go-to choice for building engaging user interfaces. Its component-based architecture, a key feature, simplifies the development process by breaking down UI elements into reusable building blocks. At the heart of React, power lies at the concept of mapping data to components. This essential process allows developers to dynamically render content within their applications. By connecting data to specific components, React enables developers to create user interfaces that respond to changes in data, providing a seamless and interactive user experience. Throughout this exploration, we will delve into the nitty-gritty of mapping data to components in React. We will uncover straightforward techniques and best practices with hands-on examples. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Just a quick info for you. If you are a professional who wants to switch careers to software engineering by learning from the experts, then try giving a shot to Simply Learn's postgraduate program in full stack web development. Accelerate your career as a software developer through the postgraduate program in full stack web development course in collaboration with Caltech CTME. In just a few months, you will learn modern coding techniques with bootcamp level intensity and gain all you need to be a full stack engineer. The link in the description box should navigate to the home page where you can find a complete overview of the program being offered. Mapping data to components in React is a powerful concept that allows us to dynamically render components based on data. It's a fundamental skill in building dynamic and interactive user interfaces. In React, we often work with arrays of data. Let's say we have an array of products, each represented by an object-oriented information like name, price, description, and we want to display these products on a web page as individual cards. This is where mapping of data to components comes in handy. To map data to components in React, we typically use the map function. So this function iterates over each item in the array and returns a new array of React components. Here's a simple example. Suppose we have an array of products where each product is represented by an object containing information such as name, price, and description. Additionally, we have a product card component that is responsible for rendering each product as a card on a web page. Now the map function in React is like a handy tool that helps us deal with list of items such as an array of products. It's a bit like having a conveyor belt where each product comes along one after the other. When we use the map function on a list of products, it takes each product and does something with it one by one. In our case, we are creating a special card called product card for each product. This card is like a template for showing the details of that product. As the map function goes through each product, it grabs the details of that product like its name, price and description and passes them to the product card component. It's a bit like giving the product card all the necessary ingredients to create a card for each product. Once the map function has gone through all the products, we end up with a whole bunch of product card components, each tailored to a specific product. Think of it like having a stack of cards each showing a different product. Now, when we put all these product card components together and render our main app component, it's like laying out all those cards on a table. Each card represents a different product and they are all neatly arranged for us to see on the web page. The beauty of this approach is that we don't have to manually create a card for each product. The map function does all the heavy lifting for us, making our code more efficient and allowing us to easily handle large sets of data. It's a smart and scalable way to display information on a web page. So now let's understand this with the help of hands-on examples. All right, so this is our VS Studio code. Now, as we can see, this is data.js. So this is the array that we will be mapping. So this is the data that we will be mapping to the components, all right? So this is our app.js component and this is card.js. We have already named them. All right, now let's start with app.js. First of all, we'll import React from React like this. Now we'll start with function app as you know. Right now we are done. Right, 
so now let's create a div so let's mean ID. so let it be like this as of now also we need to export it So this is our app.js as of now. First of all, now we'll have to move to cart.js and create a proper component over there. So this is our cart.js component. Here we will be receiving the props to display on the screen. So whatsoever will be displaying on the screen will be here only. So let's start. So import react from So inside this div, we will do some CSS as well. So let's do that. Let's I. And as we know, in the JSX format, this is how you will have to do hello curly braces when you're using the CSS. So border, let's say we keep the border in one pixel. Alright. Now padding. Adding, let's keep the padding 20 pixels. Let's say okay. Now include a margin. Let's keep the margin 10 pixels. Yeah, that would be fine. You can adjust accordingly. And yeah. Now here we'll keep an image. Right, so first the source will be image URL then coordinate will be the title and this is this. Right, so this is the image. Now we'll in H2 we will write the title. Yeah, H2 title. Let's keep it inside curly braces. Yeah. All right. Now the description would be here, right. So so as of now, let's not include these in JSX because then it will be hard for you to understand. Yeah, as of now, we'll keep like this only. Description. This is a wrong syntax, by the way. I'm just writing it as of now. All right, now it is done. Then we'll export default card. All right, so let's save it. Now. In the app.js, we'll have to map first of all the data from here. Alright, so as we can see in this array, id is there, title is there, description, image. So id is unique. So we'll be proceeding with that. First of all, here in the what we call app.js, we'll be creating these key title description images inside this div tag. So and we will be, you know, I'll be I mean, we will be mapping these. So in order to map these, we have to keep them inside the JSX. So let's do that. Right. So the name is Alright, so the name is cards data. This is the name. Right, 
calls data dot map and we use the map function So this, so here, this is a component card. Now inside this component, we will be passing the box. So we will be passing the key. Right, let's say card dot id. Right, then title equals card dot title right and there is description I'll explain you what I'm doing over here. First, let's just see how it is working. Alright, so we have doing this. So inside this component, we are returning a JSX structure. It's a div element containing a JavaScript expression. So this expression maps over the cards data. So this one is cards data. Alright, so like basically this expression will map over the cards data array and renders a card component for each item in the array. So each card component is passed props like key, title, description and image URL. So these props are extracted from each card object in the cards data array. Now let's move to the card component. So here what we are doing is we are basically passing these props and as we can see this is a component card component inside the component we are passing these props. So here we'll have to receive those props basically. So there are few ways to receive the props. Let's do this way. Title, description and the other thing was image URL. Right. So yeah, title, description and image URL. So these three were the props and now as you can see here we'll have to enclose this in curly braces because jsx and description as well all right and image we have already done that so yeah in order to display these we have to display these informations or data basically from here to here that is the screen web page we'll have to enclose them in jsx tags now I'll explain you what we are doing in this part. So this is basically a JSX structure returned by the card component. It represents the visual representation of the card. This basically represents the visual representation. First there will be an image, then there will be a title, then there will be a description. So the div element with inline styles for border, padding and margin, this is what it is. And then inside div, as you can see, there's a image tag and displaying the image specified by image URL. And then the ALT attribute is set to title prop. Then next there is an uh, H2 tag and that is displaying title prop. Then finally there's a P tag that displays the description prop. After that there's export default card. Yeah, one more thing is there, we'll have to import here as well. Then only this will work. So we'll import, import card. Right. Import cards 
data from dot slash data all right so this is the parts these are the parts all right now let's save it let's see if it is working or not all right so compiled successfully now let's see if it is working or not let's open this so as you can see card one this is and card two but i think the description is not being displayed we'll have to check why it is not getting displayed all right so by mistake we wrote cards data but we'll have to write cards only card only all right now let's save it and now let's see if it is working so yeah now the description is as you can see it is visible this is the description for card one this is the description for card two this is the title this is the image as you predicted so we can see here also image title then description same here it is image title description so as we can see here here only one or a single block of code we have written and we are over here we are creating two cards basically so we can create 100 out of this single only more than 100 so basically what we are doing is if we have these more objects or more arrays then we would have done that as well so there are two arrays so for that we have created two cards because we are basically passing this data one by one to this template we can say first we pass this then we pass this to this template so it is being displayed so this is the beauty of this react so i hope you understood how to map data to components and if you have any doubts regarding this you can put it into the comment section and with that we have come to the end of this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up i hope it really helped you all thanks for watching stay safe and keep learning hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here